Right now at 4.30, new court records show the mother of 11-year-old Madalena Kojikari believed her husband was putting the family in danger. Madalena was last seen at the end of November. Her mother and stepfather reported her missing three weeks later. According to court documents obtained by Queen City News, the girl's backpack and some clothing were also missing from her room. The girl's mother and stepmother or stepfather are both in jail, charged with failing to report the girl missing. We're joined now by retired FBI Special Agent Michael Tabman to help us better understand these types of investigations. Sir, thanks so much for joining us. Sure, thank you for having me. All right, so in your experience, what kind of techniques or strategies can agents start to use when we have two parents here who aren't being very cooperative with investigators and who um, kind of seem to be at odds with each other? What can agents do to try and get information out of them? Right. The first goal is find the child and hopefully find the child alive. In my experience, both as a police officer and as an FBI agent, when we have parents who have not timely reported a missing child, that's usually a very bad sign, though you remain hopeful. But it's not a good sign when parents haven't been the first people to report them, them missing. So the first goal is where is that child? So the best source of information, of course, it would be the parents, one would hope. What could they tell us, especially if they are uh, complicit in the disappearance? So if you have two uh, people who are not cooperative and maybe at odds with each other, you have almost the, uh, the prisoner's dilemma that you may have heard of. Uh, you know, what should I do? So they'll approach each one of them and say, all right, you're not involved, though the husband is or your wife is. But you need to tell us now, because anything we find that you may have known about or been complicit in, you too will be charged. Uh, so now is the time to cooperate. So we have that advantage there, the prisoner's dilemma, trying to get them to cooperate in their own best interest to find out where the child is. Uh, the other way is just to play them against each other. You know, tell them the other one's going to cooperate, you're going to get screwed. Tell us where it is, we're going to work a deal out now. Tell us where the child is, or tell us what happened. Uh, the other uh, thing that they always offer is a polygraph and you'll always hear about that and often they will refuse to get polygraphed in these situations and then they comply because they feel by complying they want the eye of suspicion off them if not by law enforcement by the media and by their friends and family and then if they pass it they say look i i passed if they fail it they'll have an excuse for that but the polygraph though it can't be used in court is a very strong investigative tool for law enforcement to help them focus their investigation on a person or another fact. Well, right, and they can use all the help they can get because, again, uh, those parents didn't report uh, Madalena missing until three weeks after they last saw her, so they're already kind of behind the eight ball there. And so when it comes to kind of trying to catch up, what do cell phone records and um, electronic communications tell us about or at least give us a lead or investigators a lead in a case like this? Cell phone records, electronic records, emails, have become the crux of investigations in modern times. There's hardly a case I can imagine where we're not going to go looking at somebody's electronic communications, uh, you know, via a search warrant or their permission. Uh, in the case of a missing child, we'll absolutely get a warrant. They've probably gotten one already. And what they're looking for are phone numbers uh, that might be involved in, in maybe contacting somebody uh, to, to bring the child to, or uh, maybe someone who's been involved in. We would hope not, you know, child sex trafficking. That's unlikely, but it's possible. But if the parents haven't been involved in that or don't run those circles, that's not likely. You brought up trafficking here. In these situations, how closely do investigators consider trafficking in this sense? Because the stepfather in this case traveled to Michigan and the Midwest, of course, is a, is a big um, crossroads for human trafficking. How often is that a likelihood of being something that actually happened to a missing child? Well, it's certainly possible and depends on the circumstances. I don't think that this would be high on their list of possibilities. Certainly there, it could have happened. But again, if the parents have not had uh, any experience in this, they're not running with people who have been involved in this, it, it'd be kind of difficult for this man to wake up one day, say, I'm going to traffic my daughter, you know, start asking around and, and not get caught. Uh, the best illusion I could give on that would be someone who decides to hire a hitman to kill their spouse. You hear about this all the time. Well, they don't know any hitman, so they start asking around, and ultimately they wind up speaking to an undercover agent on the other side of the phone uh, because there's not that many people willing to help them in that regard. So unless you're in those circles and you, and you start asking around about selling a daughter to the sex trade, 
there's a good chance you're going to get uh, discovered. Still a possibility. I, I think they're more looking probably at the aspect of a homicide here, an accidental death that they're just now trying to hide. Uh, based on them not reporting it for a long period of time. Yeah, and that is certainly an outcome that the community is, is hoping doesn't come to fruition, um, just hoping to to find Madalena Kojakar. Thank you so much, uh, retired special agent Michael Tabman, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.